Home run resources. The stock we're going to talk about today has been on fire so far this year, up by 200%. And I have an update for you. But first, this video might be a little bit long, but I promise that if you watch until the end, everything should be connected. And I hope so. If not, if you're, uh, you, if you're looking for a different video, this one's probably not the one for you. If we zoom out here, um, the stock is up by a couple thousand percent in the last five years. Uh, I, I, I initiated my position back in 2022 at about 10 cents, and I've been buying stock recently. Um, I'm going to leave uh, a full disclaimer for you at the end of the video, but just please make sure you read if you want a full disclosure details. Um, but if I was first starting to buy at 10 cents and I'm adding more, adding more, adding more, adding more, I think what's really interesting is the reason why I've been adding. And uh, I don't normally like to buy stocks higher, but remember, if you're averaging up, it means that your idea is working and uh, you're getting evidence because other people agree with you. Uh, past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. would encourage you to speak to one if you want to get uh, investment decisions. But here's my update. I spoke with Brian. He was really talking about silicone carbide. Silicone carbide. We have a particular view on that relative to what's going on in, tech, in the tech world with more and more demand being put on silicone technology. It's starting to hit the hurdles just like it is in photovol photovoltaics with its ability to capture the sun's energy. Um, I think I much better understand what's going on now. So that's really what I want to show you today. Let's jump straight in. This video might uh, look oddly familiar. Why? Uh, this looks kind of like what I've been hearing that they that they want to build in Brazil and potentially around the world. Got some sand over here. Got some energy storage. Got some transport. Got some sun. Right. Got some wind. We got some buildings that are powered by it. We got some charging stations. We got trains. We got buses. Whoa, who's this company? Who's cattle? Well, never heard of them before uh, yet this week, uh, but who are they? They're the number one battery company in the world. BYD is number two. LG is currently in number three. So if cattle is already doing this, uh, what's BYD going to do? Because it looks like they just overtook LG and they're probably going for number one. Well, here's the interesting part. Uh, both BYD and uh, uh, CATL cattle have been battling for, right, they're sealing a deal for what? For Sigma Lithium, which is located where? In Brazil. So these, these companies have a very big desire um, to talk about this. But today, I really want to talk about silicone carbide uh, because I think that at the end of the video, it's going to be very clear. Here's an article from April 8th from car, carnewschina.com. BYD's next generation blad, uh, blade battery to launch this year. I'm going to explain what a blade battery is. Please also know we got BYD subsidiary fin dreams. This will be important later again. Just bear with me. Um, but this is this could uh, possibly launch at the end of August. This is particularly exciting for home run shareholders because we know that we have a 90 day window. And I believe, again, I'd, I'd have to double check, but I think that window ends at the end of August. I think it's August 25th. Um, but so here we go. Possibly, right? I don't know for sure, but I'm like, damn. Uh, the stars appear to be aligning, right? I have a story un uh, unfolding here. Why? Because they're talking about a new technology, battery, second generation of blad uh, blade battery. What is a blade battery? It's silicone carbide. It's the uh, ePlatform 3.0 Evo, upgrades to silicone carbide po power modules. Okay, here's what's interesting. Uh, starting in 2020, they've been, sorry, BYD has been making batteries in Brazil. And they've had an R&D facility there since 2015, but specifically they're uh, they're building lithium lithium ion phosphate or life PO4 batteries. Okay, um, what is Home Run Resources focused on here? Solar, automotive. We uh, they're focused on ceramics that'll be relevant later, and they're focused on silicone carbide, sodium silicates, which I think I much better understand, but that'll be for a future video. And then silica-based chemicals, or I think silicone plus, as Brian alluded to in a previous interview. Um, this is from BYD's website, Aluminum Matrix for Silicone Carbide, or ALSIC. What is it for? Improving the efficiency of new energy vehicles for silicone carbide, base ceramics, thermal conductivity, low thermal expansion. Ah, sounding familiar. Now, if we dive in a little bit deeper to a LinkedIn article talking about how BYD stacks laser-welded silicone carbide power modules, laser beams, silicone carbide, um, SIC, uh, power modules, what is it? Silicon carbide, known as the heart of the electric vehicles, is a really big upgrade to efficiency. People have range anxiety, right? They're worried their car's not going to last and the cars are going to blow up. Well, we'll talk about those two things. But now here, read this article. BYD rolls out first, first energy storage system using blade batteries. What are those blade batteries? It's silicone carbide. 
Okay, silicone carbide. Remember Fin Dreams from before? Uh, I think it was right here. BYD battery subsidiary Fin Dreams. Well, let's read this one now. Um, BYD's Fin Dreams units to supply battery cells to Tesla. What the hell? Okay, it seems like BYD is selling batteries to Tesla, but they're using this brand. Is that because uh, is a public? Okay, is that because it's more palatable? Right. I think you might understand why if you can watch all the way till the end. I probably don't have a lot of time to get through it today, but very recently, people are already looking to change the global supply chain. Supply chain. Here's a here's a transcript of the video, and I've took out, took out the sections that I care about. Um, there is a growing concern that a shutoff to the uh, um, that could cripple the global economy supply chain, not just increase prices, but literally stop commerce and trade. Here we're talking about the South China Sea. Second thing. So then we have David Weston, who's the guy right here, um, asking the uh, uh, the interviewee. Um, he says, uh, is there anything, and uh, by we, I mean uh, United States and our ally allies can, should, and be doing to relieve some of these pressures. The biggest thing is that, uh, that we're doing right now is that we're redesigning our supply chains. We're localizing some of our good manufacturing. The second thing is innovation in our supply chain, rethinking the way we actually create, manufacture, or even source raw materials. That's what we need to focus on. That's what we're going to focus on today. And... Um, there's a lot of uh, money being invested into Brazil. I'm talking $19 billion from basically every company that matters right now. Okay, BYD 5.5 billion. Take a note of that number. We'll come back to it. If we look to the company's deck in phase two for the in infrastructure and revenue, their goal is to have produced silica in 2024, where there's going to be advanced thermal, thermal processing at the port of Aratu, and BYD is opening a facility there in Camasaria in uh, 2025. Okay. Um, inside the video from NREL, they also tell us that they're going to be producing lithium ion batteries. Okay. BYD is the, uh, uh, is the world's leading producer. They don't say they're number one because we know the cattle's number one, right? I only learned that actually today. So they're the world's leading producer, including lithium ion batteries. Okay. And now we know that they got that blade two battery. Now we go to the home run resources website. I see three verticals here, right? says solar solar uh, revolution, anode batteries, and energy uh, supply. Now, here I am under the, uh, I'm looking here to uh, website uh, bydglobal.com, uh, whatever. It's the new energy for Brasilia. And as I go through here, BYD has developed PV, PV plus storage, a new business model focused on renewable energy production, storage, and applications. So this thing I showed you before, like it looks like BYD is common. Why? BYD is a battery company. They're not going to stick around. Look at all those uh, solar panels. Okay. Look at these three verticals now, right? Here's the home run website, solar, uh, solar revolution, uh, batteries, uh, uh, storage. Okay. Batteries, solar, storage. Interesting. Yes. And uh, Chinese EV giants hammered by Biden tariffs are welcome in Brazil. He's looking to reindustrialize. And this is current as of May. He probably wants one of these. He's like, yeah, I'll take that. Uh, I'll swap this in for that. Yeah, I probably want it too. All right. So to try to keep the video a little bit short, now we're going to dive down the rabbit hole. So please bear with me. Again, like I promised, um, everything will be connected, but I do have to dive a little bit deep here. Why? I never knew BYD mattered until very recently. But as I look, I'm like, well, this truck's like pretty attractive, right? I know some people are not going to like it. They're like, oh, it says BYD. We'll hang around. Look at the price. All right, Cybertruck starts at uh, 80K, goes up to 100. And uh, the BYD Shark starts at 50. You cannot buy the uh, the Cybertruck until next year that'll cost 62,000. So when presented with two options, one is 50K, 53, and one starts at 80, but can basically be double at 100. Uh, okay, I might be receptive here. Man, look at this thing, right? This looks like, uh, I don't know. Um, what was the, this starts to remind me of uh, a Rolls Royce. This is the U8. I'm like, damn, that looks pretty good. Looking at the inside, I'm like, whoa, okay, it's got a logo maybe I don't like, but man, that's a pretty cool car. It's pretty cost effective too. And now looking to an article here from June 26th, you can see the timeline's compressing. That's why I'm putting the video out. The EU's tariffs on China EV leaves a loophole for hybrids. What's a hybrid? Well, this is a hybrid. This is a plug-in electric hybrid. Oh, there's actually a plug-in electric hybrid truck. Yeah, and it's selling right now in Mexico. Well, the U.S. can't buy it, but they can sell them in Europe. That's the uh, PHEV or plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. There's no tariff on it. Ah, someone's going to go into that market. Yes. And here's what I find really interesting. Mercedes-Benz and BYD join forces to develop a new Danza Central for BYD's global expansion. I didn't know what this was either. 
I'm like, okay, well, look at the car. Whoa, why is it all wrapped? Well, because it's not been revealed yet. This is the car. I think it looks pretty good. It's made by Mercedes and BYD, a joint venture they have together. And this is from April 5th. It looks like BYD wants to enter Europe. Yeah, they do. They have a lot of really nice vehicles. They've both designed to better, sorry, both designed together. And uh, as I go to their website here, this is what they're launching. BYD introduces Denza brand to Europe with a striking minivan. They have a joint partnership. I think that if you're a European and you see a new name like Denza, you know that, hey, well, at least it's partly uh, owned by the German company, right? Uh, Mercedes Benz. Well, that's a little bit more palatable than saying buying a Chinese company or BYD, which is what they're known for. Build your dreams. Well, like, yeah, we want to build our own dreams. So looking here to the uh, Danza website, there's two things to stick out to me. The Danza is going to be powered by uh, ePlatform 3.0, right? Uh, the, uh, the battery company by BYD, ePlatform 3.0. And when was this company founded? In 2010. So they've had a long-standing partnership. And um, as of right now, Mercedes owns 10% and uh, BYD owns 90%. But uh, when BYD can make a $10,000 car, uh, I think we need to note who this is because Tesla wanted to make a $25,000 car. They're like, boom, we got a $10,000 car. And it's because they control the supply chain, just like we noted in that Bloomberg video. So when they make the batteries for most companies, including Tesla, what does Tesla say? Chinese EV firms will demolish rivals without trade barriers. Uh, yeah, um, it might not be the sexiest car, but hey, that's 10 grand. Would you buy that? Which you're, mm, you know what? I'd rather buy a used car for like 20, 30,000 than buy a brand new car that doesn't cost gas. It's a hybrid. So if I'm scared about range anxiety, great. But what about this SIC? Can it really improve the range as they're stating? Well, Elon seems a little bit concerned here. And uh, this is where I think that what Elon's been doing, he's been a leader for a very long time, mission driven. Now he's a bit of a boss on a perch. And this is where BYD took advantage. Let's see what Elon's now doing now, right? Versus sleeping on the factory floor. He's accused of improperly selling $7.5 billion in stock before the stock crashed. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, okay, sold a whole bunch of stock. And then he's like, actually, I demand you double my Tesla share ownership, right? Baby, wah, wah. Or I'm going to go do uh, other stuff away from Tesla. Boo, hoo. I would prefer to build products outside Tesla. I cratered the stock, right? Crashed it. Now I want, I, want, I want free shares or I'm going to leave, right? That doesn't sound like a leader to me. Not the Elon who was sleeping in the, uh, in the, uh, on the factory floor. Now let's look over to here, right? Why BYD Wang's uh, Quan Fu, I, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly, could be China's version of Henry Ford. Where is this guy? He's in Sao Paulo. I don't know if the photograph is taken in June, but hey, that's a, that's a guy who's looking to do business. Why? Man, he's Henry Ford. Charlie Munger is agreeing. When I first read this quote, I laughed at Charlie. I'm like, oh my God, what's this guy? He's like 98. Unfortunately, passed away. RIP. And uh, now I understand a little bit better. I kind of brushed it off like everyone else. He says BYD was his best investment ever. He passed away, I believe, at 98. It's almost ridiculous how much it's beating uh, Musk's Tesla. All right. Um, BYD is the patent king with over 13,000 applications to Tesla's 863. Um, I wasn't planning to do this, but like I was joking about this with uh, Kevin earlier. It's kind of feels like uh, um, Elon built himself a uh, BlackBerry Z10, which is what cratered the stock against Apple, which is the Cybertruck. I've never liked the Cybertruck. I think it's ugly. It's overpriced. I think he built himself one of these things, something that no one wants. So what's he doing? Man, he's getting pretty pumped up about Robo Robo Robotaxi and robots right now. Why? Uh, the battery guy's coming for his company. He's like, you can't produce a $10,000 car. So it's just a matter of when, not if anymore. And let's look here. BYD's Fin Dreams units to supply batteries to Tesla, right? He doesn't make the batteries. So as good as Elon is, as smart as he is, he's not vertically integrated in a way that can allow him to compete with these companies. We see it a little bit right here too, right? Um, Elon did partly choose 8-8 um, because it's a lucky number in China, right? He's understanding that the world is shifting. Even NVIDIA recognizes it. Looking to the NVIDIA newsroom, going back a year, BYD, the world's largest EV maker, interesting characterization by NVIDIA, uh, partners with NVIDIA for mainstream software to find vehicles built on NVIDIA Drive. And here's an update from a year later. BYD to use NVIDIA's next-gen chips to elevate self-driving tech. Sounds like full self-driving. Why is BYD so important? Well, that's what I'm trying to present with you today, not just price but they have partnerships that should not exist. How are they able to get a no tariff on 
uh, plug in hybrids into Europe. How are they able to partner with BYD? I don't understand. They must be doing something right. There must be a bigger story here. What are they looking to do? They're turning to NVIDIA for advanced technology in an effort to compensate for what they currently lack in global brand recognition. Okay. Now, um, now that we understand that a little bit, we'll come back and dovetail a little bit later. But looking to Bloomberg NEF for their 2024 energy outlook, I believe this one here is from May. You can go download it for yourself. They're talking about net zero by 2050. And uh, then there's also an EV report. One's from June, one's from May. I forget which one. Um, but I'm just, just, I'm just going to show you two slides. Why? Because there's two scenarios here. I think that scenario on the, on the left is Donald Trump. I think scenario on the right is Joe Biden. Why? Because people who uh, are going to spend uh, potentially a lot of money, I'm talking hundreds of trillions, they don't hope one candidate's going to win. Secondly, there's going to be a life cycle of presidents between where we are today in 2024 and 2050. If we choose to transition, we're probably going to keep using things like coal, things like gas, things like oil. Why? Hey, because we do that today. If we don't go to net zero, right? Boom, right? Net zero scenario. We're still going to use those things. But the couple of themes, themes that I recognize are wind, solar, and the general trend is towards here. Why? Eventually, it's going to be more profitable too. So if under either scenario, there's 180 trillion plus up for grabs, I'm probably probably betting that everyone wants this, including Elon. So if we think about that, and now if we got this Henry Ford, who can finally compete, I'm like, I've laughed at most Chinese companies. I'm like, ah, they can't do anything. Right? They all suck. This guy's a battery guy. He might actually be Henry Ford. Until about two weeks ago, I would not have given him a second thought. I would have laughed at headlines like this. I'm not doing that anymore. Because I'm like, whoa, $180 trillion up for grabs under Trump or whatever under Biden. Look, the biggest chunk is green. That's EV sales. Massive. It's like $125 trillion. Or I don't know, let's call it $70 trillion, whatever. It's a big market either way. But all these things are eventually going to get used. Carbon capture, offshore, hydrogen, all the stuff. I could, I could have hours worth of videos to show everything I've prepared. I'm trying to keep things a little bit simple because even at 17 minutes, I know some people are going to be dropping off. So have a look at this. Biggest battery company sees this as a future. Trains, we got uh, mining, right? We got power, we got transmission, we got boats, we got wind, we got solar. Ugh, right? Seems like some companies are going to focus on that. Yes. And smart public transit systems are going to be important. They're going to include things like smart public transit systems on 5G, cloud computing, smart bus stops, smart public buses, and... This is where I think that what, uh, I don't know, I don't think I have a chart up here, so I can't draw. But if you think about what happened to uh, to Africa, they went straight to LTE. They didn't install fiber. I think that's what, that's what could be happening here. In Brazil, as I'll show you in a moment, is going to be going through a revolution. And if they're going to get the new tech, this might be the place for us to watch it. There's lots of evidence here. We can also note that BYD is planning to set up an internet of things. And where? For, uh, for fleet trucks in Europe. How the hell should this be possible? I should not be able to read this headline on July 2nd. How can they set up Internet of Things, right? That sounds like they got full self-driving with uh, um, with NVIDIA, and they're going to be putting it onto an Internet of cars. They're going to be driving in Europe from a Chinese company. Uh, this does not compute. Um, but this is where I think the story gets even thicker. Again, I told you we're going to go down a rabbit hole. I still got uh, one, two, three more uh, different uh, presentations to go through here. This goes back to last year. I didn't know about this company either. They're called Byron. And they actually produced a chip to rival uh, NVIDIA's uh, A100. And it's actually more powerful. You've probably never heard about it. And it's not an accident. So if now we look here to 2015, note the date, December 12th, 2015, with the UN. All right, United Nations Climate Change Conference here. All right, 2015. Now we know there's tons of money up for grabs. Elon likes being number one. He's going to want to capture that pie if he can. Why is he talking about robots? Why is he, the Cybertruck is going to take too long to retool and BYD is coming in hot. They got the Denza, they got the U8, they've got the Shark, they got uh, the Seal, they got all these cars. They're ready to sell. They're cheap. All right. So Paris Agreement 2015. Now we've got, uh, this is from the uh, Wikipedia page for silicone, uh, uh, sorry, lithium silicone. I think it's a lithium ion battery. Anyways, in 2015, Elon says he's going to use more silicone to gradually increase the amount of silicone in the batteries. Remember, BYD is a battery guy, right? He's, that's, that's how the company founded. They used to power Nokia um, cell phones. What did BYD do? Well, they were recognized in 2015 by the UN for 
The certificate is awarded for recognition in the special contributions of BYD Build Your Dreams to Advancing the Affordable, Reliable, Sustainable, and Modern Energy for All, Recognizing Leadership and Innovation Practices in the Energy and Sustainable Development um, China Energy Fund Committee. There you go. So going back to uh, the UN Paris Agreement from 2015 in December, Elon's taking a crack at batteries, right? He's got to crack the code or BYD is going to do it. Who won? Well, let's have a look. So this is from that same uh, Bloomberg report. This is the track record. We got to build 1.5 billion EVs, um, three wheel cars on track, two wheels, almost on track, municipal buses. Uh, that could be a whole video. BYD controls that market. BYD sells buses into uh, the US. They manufacture buses in California. They sell buses in Toronto. You might be surprised. Google it. Light commercial vehicles, positive trajectory, moderate needed. This one's not on track, right? We need more work done here. Um, why? Well, the American companies aren't just competitive enough. They can't produce things cheap enough. People want to buy them. So people might want to still buy ICEs, internal, internal combustion, gas cars, instead of EVs. Either way, there's still lots of money. Even if we fail, we fail beautifully with trillions of dollars in opportunity. Now I want you to pay attention to safety. So what's interesting here is that they say, this is a live test of a BYD battery. That's the old one on the left. You probably see some, some cars explode right on the news. Well, look at the one on the left. That's the blade battery. What do you notice? The nail goes through. It's called a penetration test, and it doesn't explode. Why? Because they got new technology. It's not just faster. It's not just probably, I don't know if it's cheaper. I don't want to say that, but it looks better. Whoa, I like cars that don't uh, go on fire. Yeah, I do too. All right. Could this guy be Henry Ford? Yeah, he looks like a leader too. He's in the trenches. He's like, yeah, let's go team, right? Let's take over the world, right? Let's go, Pinky. Let's go back to 2020 now. Exclusive interview with BYD uh, Wu Haiping. Uh, silicone carbide production capacity is climbing to meet the production needs of BYD. Going back to 2020. They've been wanting to change for a while. And this is where I think that Home Run really has a strategic advantage. Why? They got the sand, baby. I'll get to that in a second here. Probably just go through my presentation. Um, BYD has also been planning to use this since 2022. BYD Semiconductor launches new SIC module claiming 30% higher power than mainstream uh, mainstream products. Okay, 2022, two years ago. Yep. Now let's look here, right? There he is, right? There's uh, there's the founder. And then there's the governor of Bahia. That's Stella Lai. She's the, uh, I think she's the VP for global for uh, Europe and also for Americas. Okay. And now, um, I actually forgot to get this uh, get this up. I already have a lot of content. I'm going to the company because they put something out, out today. And as I read this, I'm like, ah, look at that. Let's read this headline. See if we get some context now. Geologically, this asset seems to have many similarities with the company's flagship Belmonte asset. My, uh, my assuming con by assuming control of this, uh, this ground, HMR aims to become the largest silica sand powerhouse in the Americas. That's from Armando, excuse me, the COO. So what are they shooting up here? It's sand, specifically silica. Correct me if I'm wrong. That looks like silica, though. Um, I've, I'm a little bit of a silica connoisseur now. Anyways, from the article we just looked at, this is where they're shoveling the sand. They're going to open up a plant in Camasseria by the end of 2024. And uh, just to, just so just for time, uh, Brazil is. This is from the uh, from the chairman. Brazil is an incredibly promising market and can be an example to the world that electrification is not only possible, but even, uh, sorry, but also improves the lives of everyone here. Uh, that's from uh, Wun Cheng Fu. Uh, next quote here. We want to support Bahia, especially in the Camasaria region, um, to, make, uh, to make it uh, become Brazil Silicon Valley. That's how we're going to build an R&D facility here. They've been there since 2015, building PV panels. Um, incentives. Um, we are here to, and this is from the government. So why do they both look happy? Well, because uh, they're getting uh, they're getting uh, business coming in. They're going to make an asset into something that's been doing nothing for a long time. And China's going to take over the world. Okay. Um, we are here to guarantee that EV, uh, electric cars produced in Bahia, that run here in Bahia, um, that have a value under 300,000 riyas, um, will be exempt from the, from the tax. Excellent. Why? Because waves of Chinese EVs are pouring into Brazil. All right. There's a little uh, little graph here. Look at that. They're booming, baby. It's booming. It's a big market for them. All right, let's read this now. It's just from the article. If electric, uh, if electric vehicles are about to flood the world economy, as many U.S. and European officials worry, then Brazil is a case study worth watching in the months ahead. Hey, our 90-day window, right? This sounds perfect. Last week, blah, blah, blah. We'll just skip forward. All right. 
In the city of Camaseria, uh, the industrial complex will utilize local port resources in the second half of 2024 to create 5,000 jobs. I just want to take a step back here to see whether or not you guys understand. Is it hopefully it's starting to connect now? So how are they going to build an industrial complex that um, is going to cater to the hundreds of trillions that will be spent? And they think that Brazil is a great place if uh, they're not going to keep pushing forward. Note this number two, this three billion. I promise it's important. I think I connected the dots here. All right, now we note these three characters, right? We got Stella Lai, um, that's the governor. Um, I'm not sure what this person's name is. I'm sorry about that. But when we look here, we got uh, we got the governor, um, we got the same person, and we got Brian here. Ah, looks like there's a connection being made. Yes, the date of the signing of this agreement is also very ironic. Um, now let's look to a 2021 sustainability study from BYD. Here's Stella Lai. Um, Brazil is the country with the greatest biodiversity on the planet, and BYD is committed to help and protect it with our innovative and sustainable products. They've been here since 2015. They run things like uh, the rail. Uh, they've been building PV models, right? Second factory. They got a lot going on here. They seem committed. And the president seems committed too. He's going to be hosting COP30. This was agreed to after COP28, and uh, he's going to be uh, broadening the focus on about the needs of the Amazon. Okay. Now, let's read the November one. Brazil to propose mega fund to conserve forests at COP28 climate summit. Well, now he's got COP30, right? Boom, right, presto magic, right? Bingo, bango, bongo. There we go. I got the money, baby. And the world's coming. They're like, brr, let's go help them. Why? 180 trillion to 250 trillion opportunity. We can't miss out. And we got to diversify the supply chain. There's a whole bunch more too, but again, at 26 minutes already, I'm trying to be mindful of time. The Green Coalition, this is after uh, COP28. So December 1st of 2023, the Green Coalition of Public Development Banks aspire to mobilize as much as 20 billion for the Ana Amazon sustainability development. All right, World Bank, let's go. Here we go from, uh, from Europe. COP28, EIB, co-finance climate, uh, this is European Investment Bank. Uh, co-finance climate action projects with the Brazilian Development Bank or the Bundesbank, baby. You guys might be familiar with this term, the Bundesbank. Yeah. How much money are we getting from these Europeans? Uh, where does it mention here? Where is the amount of monies? Co-finance, I'm not sure. It says 300 million uh, euros there. I'm not sure what the exact number is. All I know is that, hey, Europe's coming over. They're cutting a check, baby. Let's go. Why? There's lots of money up for grabs. Uh, finally. Saudi Arabia, PIF plans to invest $15 billion in Brazil. Where? Uh, to be determined. It's June 12th. The timeline's really compressing now. You know what the world wants to come and invest here? Yes. And I think a lot of it revolves around these batteries that don't explode. Um, I forget what article I mentioned, but they said that they were 98% more effective versus space, which means you basically get twice as much battery for the same space. That's excellent. It's called innovation, not iteration. Again, going back to that 2015 where... They just won, right? BYD just won. I'm sorry. Um, they've been building batteries in Brazil since 2020. It's a natural next step for them. Life PO4 batteries. Cool. Why? Man, you're going to... I don't even know what to say. Um, I went through here. Let's look at this battery. Battery. Life uh, P PO4. Lithium iron phosphate. What is it? This is where things start to get a little uh, a little spicy. This goes to... Uh, um, that's actually a screenshot. When's this uh, one from here? It's this goes back to 2021. I'm going directly to the BYD website. You can pause the video. It's the link right here. Um, it's right here. 2021 WordPress up upload. 2021 of July. What do they have? They basically got the power wall. It's a residential energy storage system. Powered your day and night. By who? By Fin Dream Battery. Cool. What can it do? It's stackable. It's smart. Network active. Uh, long lifetime. Plug and play. Man, this looks good. They got new tech. Yes, they do. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, right? They got, they got all these nice little cool battery packs. I was looking at the Magic Cube uh, battery energy storage system. You're probably familiar with those terms now. They got big ambitions. Um, let's look right here now. So if we have a look here, just ask yourself whether or not this looks similar to the cattle one. We got the, uh, the solar. We got the wind. Large power station. Black start. I don't know what the stuff means. Improve uh, utility quality, blah, blah, blah. Energy storage system. ESS. Large facility. Let's go back to here. Why? Because they haven't announced this yet. Cattle's doing it. They're the biggest battery company in the world. BYD is number two, but they're battery company. Hmm. I wonder if they're competitive, like they can build better EVs than anyone. Well, apparently they can. I'm really impressed. So let's look here. Oh, this like makes a lot more sense now. This like, I'm like, oh, okay. So take that, turn it into uh, this, turn it into silicone, turn it into PV panels, 
export it. Again, you can put it into an ESS. Just look right here. What do they got? This looks like a container ship. I could be wrong. It's like a container ship. Okay, take that. Put it on here. Boop. There's stuff with green hydrogen. Again, I, I don't want to jump down that rabbit hole. I already got enough to go through. It's already been 30 minutes. Um, almost done. Promise. Uh, but maybe about five more minutes here. All right. Um, and you're not probably not hearing about BYD in America. Why? They don't want you to. So I had to go look uh, on the Googles. And uh, the great thing about a democracy is that I can search for whatever I want. And I did not use ChatGPT. I used Google. Why? Keyword search isn't that hard. Anyways, um, Car News China. Maybe now you can understand that BYD second generation blade batteries to launch. And what's the tech they use? Lithium, lithium ion phosphate. These ones also use the exact same thing, but they've not publicly revealed what it is yet. It's the ePlatform 3.0 dedicated fully electric platform for EV cars produced by, uh, by BYD. That's probably why Mercedes is partnered with them. Now let's understand what this battery actually does. Why? Efficient re-evolution of the drive system. Upgrade to the new generation of SIC silicon carbide power modules. Okay, what do they do? They boost the EV range, and they're a hybrid. So if you're scared, you put a little gas in, you charge it up, you get a longer range because it's twice as efficient. It's the new, it's the new, uh, it's the new everything. Let's just jump down here because it uh, looks like they're building a. Uh, let's just open that image. Oh, and I got an engine right here. What is alum aluminum silicone carbide used for? It's used for this. This is a heat pump inside the engine. Again, I don't know how much of this I'm right about. All I know is that as I dig deeper, I get more and more excited because this looks like innovation, not iteration. They're stacking the batteries twice, just like a uh, a dual PV panel, right? This guy's a battery battery genius, it looks like. There you go, world first. We talked about IoT over in Europe, and they can even do reverse power. You're like, yeah, I want power out. It gives you power out. It's like a massive battery too. It's not just for part char charging your car. All right, those things seem important. Yeah, they do. While others, uh, while others will still, will, while others were still buying power modules to match their cars, BYD is designing power modules to match their vehicles' needs. Boom. Sounding like a BYD fanboy now. Let's look at the algorithmic optimization, module production. Man, who's going to be working with them to trust that? Maybe the Department of Energy. Maybe that's why they're not allowed in America yet. They have to prove themselves. I think they do. And this stuff is looking like it's in the right direction. All right. What is BYD e Platform 3.0? Well, it's upgrades to a new generation of silicone carbide power modules. Okay. We just talked about some applications here. Here's some applications from their website. Uh, batteries, engines. To what extent? I have no idea. I don't know. It shows like there's power in. I don't know. I, pfft, I don't know. I'm not Brian. Um, now we look here. Greatly improving the efficiency of new energy electric vehicles for ceramics, thermal con conductivity, thermal expansion. All right. Why does that matter? This is from the website too. So you can go here if you want to see it. Well, how do we manufacture a silicone carbide? I don't know. I found this on a website, a German one. Um, the silicone carbide manufacturing process, blah, blah, blah. What do we do? Silicone carbide ultrafine powders. Okay, stick it in. Crutching. I don't know if that's crunching or crutching. I don't know. There's a binder. There's all this stuff. Um, I'm focused on the powder here. Ultrafine powder. Then I look here. What are we developing? Oh, my goodness. Powders. With who? Hey, Design in California, baby. Right? University of California. Davis. And then we get NREL, Department of Energy, like the government. Maybe that's why we can tr trust BYD. Cool. What are we co-developing? Battery anode powders. Battery anode powders, silicone and hybrid graphite anodes. Yes, not to jump too far down, but you do need graphite in this process too. And you also need graphite in other processes. <coughs> Trying to lose my voice. If we go here to the BYD patent that was issued on uh, uh, November 14th of 2023, I'm going to focus on one section here. In a second aspect of the presentation application, the, uh, the present application provides a method of preparation, the silicone anode material comprising the steps of... All right, <clears throat> mixing a first silicone source, a titanium source and a solvent, and needing to obtain a powder. All right, titanium, uh, titanium carbon, uh, silicone carbide, aluminum, I don't know, right? Silicone, silicone carbide seems important. Seems like aluminum and titanium both have applications. Mixing the first powder with reducing an agent to form a second powder. Again, I, I'm, I'm not a scientist. I'm not smart enough to know all this stuff, but it just kind of looks like this, right? It goes in, right? crutching or crunching, I don't know, turn into a fine powder, refine it further, zap it a little bit, right? With some lasers, pew, pew, pew. get some powders, get some smart batteries. Cool. Centering the second into 
using plasma and pickling to obtain a silicone material. Man, are we making food or are we making, uh, making something else? Plasma, pickling it. Ugh, this seems complicated, but I want to look here to their deck again. Let's zoom in. Um, I, HPQ Silica Markets. Um, whether it's conscious or not, people usually read top left uh, down. This seems like the most important, solar and automotive for glass. Yep, I'm just focusing on those for today. Ceramics, we just talked about that. We talked about uh, silica-based chemicals. We talked about silicone carbide. I'll maybe make another video on sodium uh, uh, silicates, but not for today. Now let's go to the last part here. This is from uh, Be in Americas. This is recent. Uh, I can't see the whole article here, but let's just uh, delete my email. Um, and what it talks about here is that CMEX pledges $1.4 billion to make semiconductors and solar panels in Brazil. This is where... I might be way off here, but again, it's a working theory. I'm just going to where the evidence leads me, and I'll tell you what my takeaway is at the end here. CMEX to invest 8 billion reals into the technology-based industry in the Northeast. This is published on uh, the 7th, which is as of publishing today, three days ago. I'm going to show you the highlighted sections from the article. In the automotive sector, the multinational, which is CMEX, is looking to piggyback on the production of hybrid and electric vehicles by BYD and Stel Stellantis in the Northeast. Okay. Um, but the German player is not just targeting the Northeastern automotive industry and has plans to also be a supplier to the automotive chains, uh, which, uh, which are in Holland. I don't know. Uh, Stellantis, uh, that's, uh, that's Fiat, um, Mercedes Benz. Oh, there's a connection already there. XCMG. I don't know what that is. Uh, moving forward. Um, here's, here's from the article too. Raw materials will come from the Silicon Valley basin, Silicon Valley in the, in, in Bahia from Silicon Valley. Okay. Um, uh, it's gonna the, the silicone, which will come from Bahia, is one of the largest producers of minerals in Brazil. I'm not gonna show you the agreement because everyone knows about that, but um, which will produce everything from refined silicones to photovoltaic panels, as, as we just read, read in the release here, right? Semiconductors, solar panels, and the whole supply chain. Additionally, um, it is wording it is worth noting that solar energy equipment is the company's core business in the European market. Solar energy equipment is the company's core business in the European market. Pay attention to that. Also, with the investments in uh, both growing uh, segments in Brazil, automotive and photovolt photovoltaic generation, CMIX is taking advantage of a huge opportunity in LATAM. All right. Now, again, this is just me trying to be intuitive and understanding that there were a few things that just really stuck out to me over the last, uh, the last two weeks. There's this company called Denza that I found. Why? I was just Googling uh, who else was using the battery, uh, uh, the Blade Battery Evo 3.0 platform, and uh, this company happened to pop up. It's called Denza. Um, Shanghai BYD New Energy Trading as Denza is an auto company that is owned, founded in uh, 14 years ago uh, between BYD, which owns 90%, and Benz, which owns 10. They've reduced their stake down to 10. They still own part of the company. Okay, why does this matter? Well, let's look at CMIX here. Uh, if we go to their about page, what do I know? They're a multinational company, international footprint in PV solar uh, supply chain, tier one manufacturer suppliers in different parts of the PV industry, Africa, Latin America, Europe, USA, Southeast Asia, and over in China. Okay. So if they're a global company, and I'm not even going to dive down even further, there's more stuff for us to go through. So if we just look here, let's just jump to the next page. Now, if we look, I, I actually had this prepared here anyways. So... Home Run has an LOI with uh, CMIX to produce up to 365,000 tons of solar glass. Why does this matter? Well, first of all, I want to show you what an MOU versus LOI is. Um, that's important. Uh, but there's actually a supply agreement here, and I've kind of connected the, the dots for you. An MOU describes the broad outlines of an agreement that two parties have reached. A letter of intent. Uh, MOU is not legally binding. Neither is an LOI. Um, LOI is a letter of intent. It just means we're, we're progressing from one stage to the next. Okay. Um, so if we understand that, and then inside of here, we talk about uh, joint patent. Uh, that letter stuck out to me. I'm not sure if it's a typo, but there's rarely typos in news releases. Everyone reviews them. Joint patent uh, in IP, intellectual property, and high purity, pur purity silica crucible manufacturing. Innovative solar modules, blah, blah, blah. They're a leader in Europe. Okay. Now, if we look here to the uh, ultra laser process, 99.999. What we note here is, uh, again, blah, 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 blah. Metal alloys, steel alloys, solar cells, all the stuff. This is from the doctor, right? From the from the uh, tenured professor, distinguished professor. My apologies. Um, a lot of new versatilities, including silicone to SIC, right? There you go. With uh, wider band gap materials. I've dug into that. I don't want to get too deep. Um, 
What I want to focus on here was that there's also a patent application. So there appears to be a working group. That's what I think happened with NC, uh, sorry, NREL, UC Davis. There's a working group where they're working on things together. And BYD is launching multiple vehicles into, uh, into Europe, right? That introduces Denza brand to Europe with a striking minivan. It's available in plug-in hybrid and EV with seven-seat layout. They got this, they got cars, right? They got lots of stuff. But what I'm really showing you is that they're doing that with Mercedes-Benz. So now, what I want you to focus on is going to be this part right here. So um, I forget the date on this article, but it says that the facility is located in the Brazilian city of Camasaria with a total investment of 3 billion reais, which is what I've kept reading over and over. And I kind of overlooked it. Uh, but then when I looked here to BYD, this is, uh, again, since mid-2023. So like, I don't understand how this number can be wrong if, and now it's 5.5. Bloomberg is usually correct. Um, so I don't know why they would say 5.5. Here it says three. In most places, it says three. Well, maybe they're going to launch this, right? Think about this. So if the Denza is to launch, launch is to introduce into the European market to break in, and they got the sexy car. They got the minivan. I've never heard about it though. Neither of you probably. Well, let's connect the dots here. What if CMIX is going to produce solar panels, which is their primary market in Europe, with BYD in partnership? Maybe that's why they're going to spend the 2 billion. That's how it goes from 5, sorry, 2.5 billion reais. 5.5 can increase with a, a joint partnership where they basically told us that, uh, let's go back to here, they want to piggyback. Or is it? The automotive sector, the multinational is looking to piggyback on the production of hybrid and electric cars by BYD and, and, uh, and Stellantis in the Northeast. Has plans to also produce, sorry, to supply everyone. Ah, interesting. So either there's going to be something to do with cars and automotive, or maybe, again, I could be totally wrong here. They're going to be investing 2 billion reais for something here. The master plan for future projects, which is an estimate of 2 billion reais foresees the construction of three manufacturing units, which will produce everything from refined silicone to photovoltaic panels. This two billion number here sticks out to me. Sticks out to me. Why? Two plus three is equal to five. I don't know. Round it up. 5.5. That's my theory. Am I correct? I have no idea. I think we're going to have to wait. Uh, but what I'm really trying to show you is that I think that now for me, after nearly two weeks worth of research, I'm starting to much better understand what the potential for home run is. It's now going back all the way to the beginning here. I said that I first started looking at the stock at 10 cents, and now it's incredibly higher, right? It's almost a factor of 2,000% uh, higher. And I'm still buying stock. I'm averaging up. And I'm still excited. After all this time, I'm still putting in the research. I'm still excited. And... I just want to make sure that you under, now I'm going to go through my disclaimer. So at 42 minutes, this is going to be the end of the video now. So today I've talked about home run resources. I want to let you know that I am not a financial advisor. This is not a sponsored video. This is my own research and is 100% pure speculation. Might be right about 0% of the stuff. Might be right about 100. I think I'm going to have a lot of things uh, wrong. Maybe a couple of things right. But maybe now you can see the bigger picture for those hundreds of trillions of dollars. And uh, no one has helped me with this research. And no one, has, no one has verified this research, no one has, no, nor have I asked anyone to verify this research. I also purchased stock yesterday and, in, and today. I should also update that. I purchased stock yesterday and today. I want to make sure that everyone understands there might be conflicts here. So I purchased stock yesterday and today, including at the ask and in the last hour, which may have impacted the share price of home run resources. I purchased stock in the last few weeks, including at the ask and in the last hour uh, of trading, which might have, might have also impacted the share price please consult a registered investment advisor before making investment decisions. Finally, please read the description for full disclosure details. With that said, thank you so very much for tuning in. I look forward, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you.